We've got the same group here today that we had at our very first country family reunion, except two people are not here. And I know everybody joins me in, in missing our friend Justin Tubb and our friend Grandpa Jones. There's a, there's a big hole in the room because they're not here. And yet, uh, you listen to that song, No Place Like Home at Christmas, and we know that they're in a better home. Grandpa made one of the greatest records, not only Christmas records. Grandpa Jones made one of the greatest records, I think, that's ever been made in this town or any other town. Dickie Lee was telling me a while ago, he carries us around in his car and listens to it throughout the year. You don't wait till just Christmas time to listen to this. And I thought today, since... Um, since we're missing Grandpa, that uh, maybe we ought to just listen to what he did, the beautiful recitation that he did called The Christmas Guest, kind of as our way of, of having Grandpa here with us at Christmas time. It happened one day near December's end, two neighbors called on an old time friend, and they found his shop so meager and mean, made gay with a thousand boughs of green. And Conrad was sitting with face a shine, when he suddenly stopped as he stitched the twine, and he said, old friends at dawn today, when the cock was a crowing the night away, the Lord appeared in a dream to me and said, I'm coming your guest to be. So I've been busy with feet of stir, strewing my shop with branches of fur. The table is spread and the kittle is shine, and over the rafters the holly is twined. And now I'll wait for my Lord to appear and listen closely so I will hear his step as he nears my humble place. And I open the door and look on his face. So his friends went home and left Conrad alone. For this was the happiest day he had known. For long since his family had passed away. And Conrad had spent many a sad Christmas day. But he knew with the Lord as his Christmas guest, this Christmas would be the dearest and best. So he listened with only joy in his heart. And with every sound, he would rise with a start and look for the Lord to be at his door, like the vision he had a few hours before. So he ran to the window after hearing a sound, but all he could see on the snow-covered ground was a shabby beggar whose shoes were torn and all of his clothes were ragged and worn. But Conrad was touched, and he went to the door, and he said, Your feet must be frozen and sore. I have some shoes in my shop for you, and a coat that'll keep you warmer, too. So with grateful heart, the man went away. But Conrad noticed the time of day, and he wondered what made the dear Lord so late, and how much longer he'd have to wait. When he heard a knock, he ran to the door, but it was only a stranger once more. A bent old lady with a shawl of black and a bundle of kindling piled on her back. She asked for only a place to rest, but that was reserved for Conrad's great guest. But her voice seemed to plead, don't send me away. Let me rest for a while on Christmas Day. So Conrad brewed her a steaming cup and told her to sit at the table and sup. But after she left, he was filled with dismay, for he saw that the hours were slipping away, and the Lord hadn't come as he said he would, and Conrad felt sure he had misunderstood. When out of the stillness, he heard a cry, Please help me and tell me where am I? So again he opened his friendly door and stood disappointed as twice before. It was only a child who had wandered away and was lost from her family on Christmas Day. 
Again, Conrad's heart was heavy and sad. But he knew that he could make the little girl glad, so he called her in and wiped her tears and quieted all her childish fears. Then he led her back to her home once more. But as he entered his own darkened door, he knew that the Lord was not coming today. For the hours of Christmas had passed away. So he went to his room and he knelt down to pray. And he said, Lord, why did you delay? What kept you from coming to call on me? For I wanted so much your face to see. When soft in the silence a voice he heard, Lift up your head, for I kept my word. Three times my shadow crossed your floor, Three times I came to your lowly door, For I was the beggar with bruised cold feet. I was the woman you gave something to eat, And I was the child on the homeless street. Three times I knocked, three times I came in, and each time I found the warmth of a friend. Of all the gifts, love is the best. I was honored to be your Christmas gift. In some ways, we're very lucky that when we lose a friend like that, we never really lose them. How can you say he's gone when you can hear things like that that he did? And we'll always have that. It'll always be with us. And if we ever want to think about Grandpa, which we'll always do, but we can always go get that and listen to it or see a video of him doing it and he's always with us and always will be <laughs> 